we have a young social entrepreneur, the co-founder of Huck, a non-profit organization that is making a significant impact in the areas of menstrual hygiene, financial literacy, and legal education for women. Ms. Anya Wig is currently pursuing her LLB at Campus Law Center DU. A SUSI scholar and US Department alumni, she co-founded COVID Fighters India, a major COVID-19 relief initiative. Recognized with awards such as HTC Slays and LinkedIn Top Voice for Social Impact. She has also worked with the Young People's Action Team of UNICEF. On this note, please welcome Ms. Anya Vig to the stage. Do machines think like us or do we think like machines? Stay with this question and we'll come back to it in a second. As a gender rights advocate, a lot of my work revolves around engaging with young adults and children. I recently took a workshop in Rajasthan mm -hmm. while sitting in Delhi. In rural Rajasthan, sitting in Delhi, thanks to the internet, a lot of these children were from the age group of 8 to 12. So I asked them to do a really fun activity. I asked them to draw what they wanted to be when they grew up. I was hoping for them to draw Deadpool, Spider-Man, Shah Rukh Khan. I mean, I would have drawn Ashwarya Rai, but that didn't happen and I guess that's a good thing. Anyway, the drawings that I got were of police officers, teachers, nurses, cricketers and doctors. While there was no other prompt that was given to these students, they all followed a pattern, a gender pattern. Police officers were male, teachers and nurses were female and somehow doctors and cricketers were male again. While most of the girls wanted to be teachers and nurses, some of those who actually wanted to be police officers and doctors draw men in the uniform. And I wondered why this happened. The thing is, when you don't see a lot of primary school teachers that are not men, when you don't see a lot of doctors that are female, and when you don't see a lot of police officers that are women, you don't dream of being there. My mother is a primary school teacher and she gave me a task of printing pictures. Essentially, her students were supposed to identify different professions and obviously, being the tech savvy daughter, I decided to take this task up. When I googled these professions, this is what came up. For doctor, for government officer, for cricketer, for footballer and secretary. Do you see anything that's wrong with these pictures? Well, for starters, it seemed like all doctors in the world are men and all secretaries in the world are women, maybe with an exception of two people. And to confirm my hypothesis, I tried to test Google a little bit more. I googled surgeon and nurse, teacher and professor. And I saw the gender pattern continue here. Through a Google simple search, we understand that a lot of the teachers or professors are gendered. Even within professors, the more senior and the more superior professions are seen to be of those run by men. And those that are like nurses and doctors and teachers are by females. So is Google sexist? The answer is no, and I'll tell you why. It's because Google isn't deciding who is a surgeon and who is a doctor. It's actually showing you what humans ourselves have put into Google as a primary data set. Google isn't deciding that all men are doctors or all teachers are female. It isn't thinking. It's mirroring how we think. To answer whether machines think like us or we think like machines, let's talk about fairy tales for a second. I have a friend who now has a toddler getting very used to reading story tales and fairy tales. So I decided I'm going to be the cool aunt. I'm going to come up with the most innovative stories. But unfortunately, my creative abilities are very limited. And I could think of nothing beyond Goldilocks and the three bears. So I turned to my best friend, ChatGPT. I told ChatGPT, tell me a story about two people. One a police officer and a teacher, assign them roles and narrate a day in their lives. And guess what? It comes back to me with a day in the life of Officer Raj and Teacher Meera. Seriously? As you can see clearly, the feminist in me was very upset, very disappointed. I thought I'm going to try again. 
and I did. This time I changed it a little bit. Tell me a story about two people, one a surgeon and a nurse, assign them roles and narrate a story in their lives. And unfortunately again, I received the same very general response. A day with Dr. Aryan and Nurse Priya. You see, like many others, I thought AI is rational, unbiased, gives response based on merit. But the truth is, AI is just a reflection of our society. And unfortunately, our society is still very stereotyped, still very discriminative and still very full of biases. Our society has rules for girls. How they should sit, how they should talk, how they should stand, what they should wear, what they should do, what they should not do. But for boys, well, boys will be boys. Which made me wonder again, do machines think like us or do we think like machines? And you must be wondering why all of this matters to you. Why does it matter if Chad GPT is showing all police officers in a fairy tale like a police officer man? And how does it matter if the top 10 pictures of CEOs on Google are men? Well, it does. Let's come back from fairy tales to the real world. Body language analysis, CV scanners, gamified tests, all are these things that companies now st start using to hire people. AI is the one that they interact with and AI and machine learning tools are the ones that they decide if this person is fit and good for a role. More than 70% of the companies across the world are now using artificial intelligence. Well, it's cheap, it's fast and free of bias. Well, is it really? Many of the algorithms used by recruiters to manage their hiring processes today have been shown to reproduce and sometimes even amplify the biases and the human errors they were supposed to eliminate. Let's look at the cautionary tale of Amazon, an industry giant. They built an experimental AI driving hiding model, which is essentially supposed to help them become groundbreaking. And it truly was. And it did exactly what it was supposed to do. It was supposed to learn from the hiring practices of AI and Amazon. But then they stopped that model. Any guesses why? Well, they stopped because it was discriminating against women and favoring only male candidates for senior technical job roles. The tool was supposed to go through thousands of CVs and find potential candidates, source out the best ones following past hiring practices. In Amazon's case, the algorithm was supposed to learn from CVs that Amazon had collected in the past 10 years. And given the low proportion of women at Amazon and generally in the tech sector, the algorithm thought that male dominance is the factor of success which is why they started choosing men over women. And hence, the algorithm, which was actually supposed to be full of merit, learned to systematically downgrade women's CV for technical roles. AI learns primary from human inputs, from its primary data sets. And a lot of times, these data them sets themselves are full of stereotypes. What AI does is absorbs our biases and reproduces them. Contrary to what you may feel, I'm not here to tell you that we are doomed in the hands of AI. In fact, I think AI is groundbreaking. Today, AI is already predicting breast cancer five years in advance, has started self-driving cars, creating mechanisms to find out and work on climate change and enabling so much more access. AI is here to stay. So what can we do to ensure that AI is good for all? Well, for starters, we need to make sure that algorithms are built fairly with unbiased data sets that are representative of genders, caste, class, demography of all of us. Along with that, we need transparency to understand how do these AI decision making algorithms work. We need AI to make workplaces better, not worse. We need AI to tackle inequality and discrimination, not perpetuate it. Large companies need to be held accountable and must enable AI that can be equal for billions and not become an exclusive platform for men. Which brings me back to my first question. Do machines think like us or do we think like machines? The truth is, machines don't think at all. 
they are just a mirror reflection of what our society thinks of us of our stereotypes so when google shows you the pictures of just men when you google footballers it says more about us than it does about google when chat gpt shows you only police officers as men in a fairy tale it doesn't talk much about chat gpt but about us the flaw is not in these machines but in the way that our biases have seeped into these machines the problem is that we still believe that the home is for women and the world is for men so if you want to see a more inclusive tomorrow we have to change the way that we think today thank you